Hi everyone, this is the second part of the lecture on uh, curvature and this is just a throwback, it's just one, well two examples, um, one sort of general concept and then one specific example and it's really about taking the idea of curvature and applying it to functions uh, from calculus one, so functions of a single variable. So we're thinking of C as a plane curve given by an equation y equals f of x. And we want to take the ideas that we just developed about curvature and apply them to this kind of function. In particular, we're going to use this result that says the curvature of a parameterized curve can be computed by taking the cross product of its derivative vector function cross the second derivative vector function and then divide uh, the magnitude of that and then dividing by the, le the length of the derivative function cubed. Now you might be thinking at this point, wait a minute, cross products only exist in three dimensions. We're going to be focused on curves in two dimensions. How can we use that result? Well the idea is we just pad it. We pad the third component by a zero. We think of it as living in three dimensions, but just in the xy plane with no z component. So that's what we're going to do. First thing we've, we've got to do in this direction is to take that curve, y equals f of x, and write it as a parameterized curve. And so that we can do by taking it to be the x component is x, the y component is f of x, and the z component is zero. And so there we go. We've just taken that curve and we're now we're thinking about it as a curve in the xy plane. Now we can take its derivative and that's going to be 1 f prime of x and 0. We can take its second derivative and that's going to be 0 f double prime of x and 0. We're interested in also the magnitude of our prime of x because that's going to be in the denominator of our curvature formula. So this is going to be the square root of 1 plus f prime of x all squared. Now you're starting to see these ingredients get assembled. There's a square root of 1 plus f prime of x all squared. You can see the 1 prime of x, f of x all squared. And then you can see the square root as the over the division by 2 in the exponent and then the 3 of course is coming from the formula so we can start to see where where this formula is coming from. Alright and then the last thing we're going to need to do is take a cross product so that's going to be r prime of x cross r double prime of x and that is we'll write it out i j k in this case k's are all zero because we're, these are vectors that live in the xy plane. They have zero z component. This is 1 f prime of x and 0 f double prime of x. So when we go ahead and compute the cross product, uh, what we're getting is there's only going to be zeros in the first two components, but the third component is going to be f double prime of x. So f double prime of x k hat. So there's our cross product. Makes sense. We've got two vectors in the plane. When we take their cross product, they should be pointing in the z direction or the k hat direction. So then our curvature at any given point, uh, I said t here, but it's really at any given point x. Curvature at any given point x is given by the cross product all over the magnitude of the derivative cubed. So that's f double prime of x all over Oh, and that's the magnitude, so I'm going to have the magnitude up there, all over 1 plus f prime of x all squared to the 3 halves, the cube of the square root. And there's our formula. So we've taken the ideas from uh, space curves, curves in three dimensions, and we've just said, well, if they live in the plane, we can still do these same results, and we get a formula for curvature that we could have been using in Calculus 1. You may or may not have used it. I think it was an exercise in, in the textbook and so you, your instructor may or may not have assigned this exercise to show this formula in a different way and then use it to compute curvatures.
So we can now do a follow-up example. At what point does the curve y equals e to the x have maximum curvature? So if we think about what y equals e to the x looks like, it looks like this. y equals e to the x. And again, if you want to think about curvature, it's like bending. Where is it bending the most? Where is it bending the least? It looks like it's not bending very much way out here and way out here. It doesn't look like to be bending very much. So maybe the bends in those extremities are going to zero. Oops, I got rid of my axes. So the maximum bend looks like it's probably occurring somewhere in here. The maximum bend is in some sense where it's look where it's where it's curving, where it's bending like a small circle, like a, a circle of small radius. And it looks like it's happening somewhere in there. So I'll put a little question mark somewhere in there. Maybe the maximum's happening. Let's see if we can figure it out. So we're going to head and go ahead and find the curvature. The curvature at a given position x is given by the magnitude of the second derivative all over the uh, 1 over the derivative squared to the 3 halves. That was the formula we just worked out above. This is e to the x is our second derivative. Remember our function is y equals e to the x, so now we can plug those things in. That's a 1 plus e to the 2x to the 3 halves. So there's our curvature formula. We want to maximize. So we want to maximize k of x on the whole real line. So this is a max min problem now, optimization problem. How do we f solve these things? We first find the critical points. So what's the critical points? That's where the derivative would be zero. So I'm going to need to know the derivative of this function. So it's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. And that's a 1 half and then a 2e to the 2x all over the bottom squared, 1 plus e to the 2x cubed. A little bit of cleanup on that. Um, we'll just write down the cleaned up version. So a little bit of algebra just to clean it up a little bit. We get an e to the x, a 1 minus 2e to the 2x on top, and a 1 plus e to the 2x to the 5 halves on the bottom. In other words, I'm taking this common square root of 1 plus e to the 2x out of both terms on the top and canceling them with the part on the bottom. So that's our derivative of our curvature. Now we're interested in when is it 0, because that's the critical point. So when is our curvature equal to 0? That happens precisely when the numerator is equal to 0, because the denominator, well, it'll never vanish. So when is our numerator equal to 0? Well, e to the x isn't 0, so that's precisely when 1 minus 2 e to the 2x is equal to 0, or in other words, where 2e to the 2x is equal to 1, or in other words, when e to the 2x is equal to 1 half. Taking the logarithms of both sides, we get 2x is equal to the natural log of a half, or in other words, 2x is equal to the negative log of 2, because log of a half is negative log 2, or x is equal to negative log 2 over 2. So there is our result. That is where the curvature is maximum. So therefore, k is max when x is equal to negative ln of 2 over 2. All right. The last part of the question says, what happens to the curvature as x goes to infinity? Well, that means we're interested in the limit as x goes to infinity of the curvature function. So that's the thing we're interested in computing the limit of as x goes to infinity. As x goes to infinity, the top goes to infinity, the bottom goes to infinity. So this is going to be a L'Hopital rule type situation. Um, but we'll do a bit of intuition work here. This top is like e to the x. The bottom, well, when, when x is really, really big, that 1 plus, the 1 doesn't really make any difference. When x is really big, this is roughly e to the 2x on the bottom. But then that's being raised to the power of 3 halves. 
So the twos would cancel in this. On the bottom, it looks roughly like e to the three x. So we've got something that, you know, I'll, I'll write it in red. This is our thought bubble. Four x big. This is approximately e to the x over e to the three x. In other words, it's approximately one over e to the two x. And so that bottom's getting really big, the top's one over something really big, so this is going to zero. You can get that same result by L'Hopital, but this was just an uh, informal way, sort of by using your gut kind of feel for what's going on here. So this is going to be zero. In other words, it means that the curvature goes to zero as x gets really big. All right, so that's it for these two examples. It was just, again, an illustration of how to take these ideas of curvature and apply them to plane curves from Calculus 1. Thanks for watching.